Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to create your own mobile application and utilize third party open source APIs and you want to do it for free without code, you've come to the right place. I'll be covering the basics of that in this video. Now if you're skeptical about the free app making portion, feel free to check out AppGyver's website. At the time of filming this video, the pricing page shows it's completely free for those making 10 million or less in revenue. So we're going to be making our mobile application right here, and I'll put some additional resources in the description to learn more about the AppGyver API and just general AppGyver tutorials that I have made. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're using a third party API. So one thing that you need to consider when using third party APIs and just building applications in general, make sure that you have the licensing or rights to use the information or API for whatever the purpose is that you're using it. So basically don't use what you're not allowed to use and what you are using, make sure you have the rights or permissions needed to use it. And then lastly, because this is pulling in information from a different source, make sure that you're following any and all applicable rules, regulations, guidelines, federal laws, etc. So when you're pulling in this information, make sure that you have or that you are following any applicable rules, regulations, guidelines, laws, etc. All right, so now we're going to jump into the video itself. So first thing on your YouTube page, scroll down, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, let me know that you like the content, drop any questions or comments below. Now, I'm going to give the credit to the individual who made this article first. I'm not affiliated with them or the website in any way, but it is a five simple to use API for beginner website, and it lists some random APIs that you can use. I'll put a link to this in the description, as well as this article, which I will reference in a bit. So basically, these are a couple of APIs that you can utilize. For this video, I'll be using the Open Trivia Database API. Pretty simple. We have the URL right here to get some random trivia questions. So we'll go to the app. I have a title up here, a button here, and then text here. Pretty simple so far. Now, in the past, I've used this data configurator menu. So typically, you would click data, click add resource, and click REST API. And then you would get this menu here. I'll show you why I'm not doing this in a second. But you'll notice here we have the resource ID and the description, Just I just called it quiz. And then you'll see here is the resource URL, and this will look familiar. It's just this first part right here. Then when we go to the get section, you'll see it's the remainder of the URL, which we have here. So I basically just split it where this little slash is or the, the forward slash is. And I have the remainder, the response key path, I just put data. When I go to test, you'll see when I run the test, I get all of this information. And it's relatively organized, so you'll see we'll always have the category, type, difficulty, question, etc. Now, the trick here is you'll see the result was not an array, so we can't set a schema from the response, meaning we're not going to be able to organize this information the way that we have in videos in the past. So we're going to modify the text in a different way. Now, you can read through the article, which actually references the result was not in an array. I didn't see any solutions, at least when I was reviewing that article that I could use. So I'm going to take a different route altogether. So for this, I'm going to be going to the button two. And this is just this button here, the logic for it. So on component tap, you can just add the data, which is an HTTP request. Pretty straightforward. You can download it from the flow function market if you don't have it already. And the URL you'll see we have right here. Pretty simple. Now, if you need to modify your URLs, it's actually a really simple process. So if you wanted to add something, for example, if I wanted an amount greater than 10, if this URL allows us to do that, then you would simply put plus and then you could put an app variable and it would just add it. So for example, if the variable app variable one, if it has text, then it's going to add the text value right here because this quote, these quotes are not added. So what I mean by this is when your app Giver, when app Giver is pulling the information here, it will pull what's in between the double quotes and then append or add 
whatever the app variable is at the end of it. So you could alter the URLs. I don't need to do that here. I'm just saving this as it is. I'm keeping it as a standard get request. I'm not adding any custom data. You'll see the request body type. I believe this was actually added for me. I don't remember changing this. And then you'll see what I'm doing is I'm setting a variable. So click the variable slider, create an app variable called variable one. And basically I'm just setting the app variable to the output of the HTTP request. So we'll go back over that real quick. We have component tap, and then I dragged over the HTTP request, which is basically just a get request to the specific URL. Then the top node is attached to a set app variable. So I have an app variable called variable one. You can just click here, choose the correct variable and the assigned value, you will select output of another node. What you're going to do there is you're going to select the logic of HTTP request, and then you're going to select the node output, which is raw response body. And then we will save all of this. And then with this, we are just going to add a text field so you can drag it over. And then you're going to assign the variable to app variable one. Now mine looks a little different and I'll explain why in a second, because again, we have to do some modifications. But what we're going to do is I'm going to copy all of this and then I will simply make it app variable one. So we'll click save and we'll see what this actually does. So I'm screen mirroring my phone. So we'll click random joke API and you'll see if we increase the number of lines here, how much data we're actually getting. So we're getting a relatively large amount of information. And if I increase the number of lines, it could actually have more. So to make this a little bit easier to use for users, I'm going to limit it to 10 lines and see what comes back. Now you'll see here that we still get quite a bit of information. So there's a couple of things to consider. First, when you're limiting the number of lines, make sure that if your API is going to return different amounts of information that you're not cutting off the end. Next, if we continue, you'll see the API is actually giving us different questions. So you have to make sure that you're accounting for dynamic content. Now, what we're doing here is we're going to go back to the formula for app variables and we'll paste in what I've used previously and we'll break it down. So I am going to replace all. So we have this function. Now, if you're not familiar with these functions, if you scroll down, there's a text option here and you can actually see as you scroll down, there's a replace all. Now you can use really any of these that you're interested in. You can see that there are different ways and documentation off to the right. But if we go to replace all, you'll see when we scroll down, you see these examples. So in this text string, we're replacing this with this and then this would be the output here so pretty pretty self-explanatory the tricky part comes with doing this multiple times for different values so what i have done is i have this replace all statement and i'm replacing in the app variable one the open bracket with nothing so you'll see in quotes there's nothing here and this statement is encapsulated within a larger replace all statement where I have the closing bracket and I'm also replacing that with nothing. The reason is I want to go ahead and get rid of this bracket here and any other open and close brackets. As you'll see, there's quite a few throughout this, um, this setup here. So this is your way you can, if I'm not mistaken, continue to add in additional replace all statements kind of following a similar format, but this allows you to use a replace all within a replace all and get rid of the brackets and continue to transform the information and clean it up a bit. So I'm going to click save and then we will call the random joke API again and you'll see it's a little bit cleaner now. We now have some curly brackets we need to get rid of. But you'll see we have some information here that we can actually work with a little bit more easily. So let's continue to work with this a bit, try to follow this same format. So what we can do here is go back to the beginning and we'll type in replace underscore all. 
and then we need to put in a parentheses. And again, we're following this exact same format. So at the end, you're going to have another parentheses that's going to be needed. And you're going to put in all of your relevant information. So we need to do the exact same thing. And you'll see we have the first one and then the second one. So what we need to think about next is what needs to be replaced. I want to get rid of the open curly bracket as well as the closing curly bracket. So following this format, we would essentially need to figure out, okay, we'll start with the open curly bracket. So what we're going to do is we will put a space here. And then we'll do the open curly bracket, comma, space, and then double quotes. And then we will close this off. So effectively, what we're doing here is we're saying when we replace all, we have this statement and then this statement. So this statement is this, this statement is this, and then this statement is effectively everything. So you'll see the way that this is being set up, and sometimes you may need an additional closing uh, parenthesis here. But that would be the general idea, and it'll let you know when you can save it, if you have any errors or anything like that. I like to add the extra one just to go through and make sure the syntax is correct. So you'll see right here, replace all is applying to what's in this. And then this one is applying to everything in here. So it looks like the only thing that we're going to need is a comma here, and then we can remove this. So it kind of helps you to figure out what needs to go where. So we'll click save. I know that's a lot and can be kind of confusing. So let's just see what the output looks like and go from there. So random joke API, you'll see now we don't have any opening brackets. So let's work through getting rid of the closing brackets now. So in this statement, we will put replace underscore all, and then we will put an open parenthesis, and then at the end, we will put comma space, and then in quotes, we will put the closing bracket, comma space, double quote, because we don't want to replace it with anything, so what's in between the double quotes is what's added, and then we will put the final parentheses, or closing parentheses. We'll click save, and at this point, we should expect all brackets to be gone, and you'll see that is exactly the case here. So now we have some slightly more usable data. Now, obviously, we're probably going to want to get rid of the quotes and replace the underscores with spaces, maybe get the things like this replaced, like the ampersand quote. As you can tell, there's a lot of stuff that you have to work with and potentially different formatting as different text comes through. But this is at least enough to get you started and help you to kind of format things. So that'll get you started with figuring out, okay, how do I present this information in a more usable way? But this would be a way, if I had the rights and um, uh, basically permissions to use this, I could create a joke app that just allows people to keep clicking the button and see different uh, jokes and answers and things of that nature right here. So really, really simple and easy to way, uh, easy way to set this up and apologize. I called this the random joke API, but again, it's actually the trivia database. So this would, there is a random joke API you could utilize as well, but the overarching theme here is you can find third party open source APIs, clean up the information and pull it in. It's a little bit easier if you have an API that's formatted with an array. If that is the case, check out the links in the description and learn more about setting up the API yourself. But other than that, that's pretty much everything that I have here. So I hope that is enough to get you all started making some clean API applications. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. I'll see you all in the next video.